Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, we're gonna look at the Commodore PET. Gonna give it a little lovin'. Let's get right to it. Here you see my PET 4016. I was lucky to have bought this for $10 from a thrift store in town. I actually bought two of these for $10 each and neither of them worked, but I was able to fix both of them and they both were a little rough around the edges condition wise, but I combined them both together to make one working machine that's really nice like this one. The only issue I have is uh, the label's a little picked on the corner. These were used in a school. This also has engraving from the school that was used at, but I actually don't mind that. It kind of is a little bit of history for this machine. Now what this video is gonna be about is I wanna do something quick and easy to this machine to make it a little bit more useful to me. For a long time since I've had these machines, I had no way to run software on them, but recently I went ahead and I built a PET SD card. So this is an open source project. It plugs into the IEEE bus connector on the back of the PET and allows you to load stuff off of an SD card. It works a lot like an STIEC on a C64. Now, one of the big issues is here I'm running the really excellent Space Invaders game on the PET is there's no way to exit out of the game. Well, this one may, but a lot of the games don't have a way to exit. And you end up having just to literally power cycle the entire computer, which is fine, I guess. I'd rather not power cycle my PET continually just because I wanna stop playing one game and play a different game. So let's see if we can figure out how to add a reset button to the pet. Let's take a look at the schematics to see how I'm gonna hook up the reset button. My pet 4016 has inside of it what's called a universal board. This was the very last motherboard design that Commodore used on the pets. And there are some various other designs that were used throughout the years. So this may or may not apply to yours. So definitely check the schematics first before you do this mod. The page we're looking at here says CPU and memory expansion, and we are going to zoom in to the reset circuit right here. So all pets use a 555 timer to control the power up reset. This essentially holds the reset line to ground when you first power up the machine, and it does this for a little bit of time, maybe a second, and once the machine has stabilized, like the power rails are good, everything is good, it releases the reset line and it goes to five volts. This instructs the CPU to start executing code. It's very important that the reset circuit hold it low when you first power on, otherwise you get unpredictable results. I always check the reset line on all the machines I repair to make sure it's behaving correctly. This is pretty much universal on all of these old 8-bit computers. The reset line has to be held low initially. Well, the 555 is a simple timer IC and this is what actually is doing that. Commodore labels this and it says literally power up reset. And there's various capacitors and resistors connected to it. But then the output is pin three. And this goes through a couple gates and that ends up being the reset line. It says RES with a line over it. That means when it's held low, it's in reset. Now I said pin three was the output of the 555 and it is buffered on the universal pets by two gates. It goes through a 74 LSO4 and then it goes through a 7417. This is an open collector. What that means is this chip only has the capability of bringing the reset line down to ground. It doesn't have the capability of driving it up to five volts. The idle state of the reset line is five volts and that's accomplished by this trace here. If we follow this up, it eventually makes its way past J4 reset line up to R15, it's a 1K resistor, and then it hits the five volts. Where I'm going with all of this is, one way to reset this PET is to simply ground this output pin, pin six right here on the 7417. And like I mentioned, the 7417 is open collector. So when the machine needs to be reset, it's holding that signal down at ground, but as soon as it's finished, it releases the line and it floats up to five volts because of that pull-up resistor up there that I mentioned, but otherwise, if we ground this line directly, it won't damage this open collector. So this is actually a fine place to just reset the entire computer. 
All right, now let's take a look at the schematic for the PET 2001-8. That's the original PET that has the Chiclet keyboard that I also have. The first page here, we can zoom in and right away see this LM555 timer. So this is what's handling the reset on this machine. And notice there's a little bit of a difference with this one. Very similar looking when it comes to all the little passive circuits that are on here. But notice the output pin three goes into an LS04 and then that's it, that signal then goes directly into the reset line of this nearby 6520, and it will go off and go to the CPU as well. Notice that there is no 7417 open collector gate on the PET 2001-8. So if we hook up a switch to the output of this gate, pin two, and we try to ground it, we're gonna be fighting against this gate, which is trying to hold the reset line up at five volts. We'll be pulling it down to ground, which essentially is creating a short circuit for this gate, which could easily damage it. But don't worry, not all is lost for making a safe reset circuit for the PET 2001-8 that will also work on the Universal PET and probably all the other PETs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ground pin two on the LM555. I'm gonna do that through a resistor and that will have the effect of making the computer think it was just turned on. What happens when you first turn on the PET is this signal on pin two, and actually it's funny it's not labeled on this schematic, it's labeled on the other one. What happens is this is at ground, and essentially what that does is that creates that delay when you first turn on the computer where the reset signal is held down at ground, and then it comes up to five volts and then the machine boots. So us just grounding this pin here will have the same effect of making it think the computer has just turned on. Now switching back to the other schematic, you'll see pin two is actually labeled on this one. So a resistor on pin two will work equally well on both of these pets. Here's my other PET 4016. This one stays down in the basement. And because these machines are so heavy, I'd much rather work on this one down here, figure it all out, and then I can just go add the mods to the one upstairs. You'll notice this one isn't as in good condition as the other one. The label specifically is really rough. Like the other one, this one has the engraving from the Portland School District, and I'd imagine that kids probably just picked at the label. But even with that, the computer does work properly, so if I turn this on, I should get the regular basic prompt. Yep, there it is, it is working. So what's really awesome about the pets is they have the old uh, kickstand. So you flip them up, and there's a little rod, which you just put up here in the corner, and there we go, we have full access to the computer. All right, so here's the iPad and the schematic for the universal board. So remember, we are looking at pin two on the 555 timer. This is what we're gonna be pulling down to ground through something like a 1K resistor, right? And then we're gonna connect that up to ground somewhere on the board. There will be a switch in the middle, and with that switch, we will be able to reset this machine, hopefully. So I'm not sure exactly which PET models have this universal board, but if you're not sure, all you need to do is open the PET and take a look right here on the motherboard. It literally says Universal Dynamic Pet. Next, taking a look inside, it's pretty easy to locate the 555 timer in any of the PET computers, actually. All you need to do is look for an eight pin dip. And a quick look, it's right here on the back of the board. That's the 555 timer that handles the reset. Now, it's also not hard to figure out which is pin two on this eight pin dip. What you need to do is look for the notch on these chips, and it should be all facing the same direction. On the PET Universal board, it faces to the left. And what that means, if we look at this 555, the notches here on the left, that means that this pin right here on the front row facing us on the left is pin one. And it goes one, two, three, four, and then on the back side, five, six, seven, eight. So now we have to wire up this modification. I'm gonna be using parts that mean it's a temporary mod and there will be no parts soldered or permanently attached to the pet. I'm gonna accomplish this by using these little clips. They're not super high quality, these Chinese ones, but they're absolutely fine for large format dip chips. You wouldn't wanna use this on surface mount stuff, but the way these work is you take a little wire like this and it connects up to this pin over here on the left side, at least the way I'm holding it. So you slide that on just like that. If I take my thumb and I squeeze from this little part here onto this front of the clip and I push, little jaws pop out. They're little clips and you basically stick that around the chip leg and it's spring loaded. When you let go, they'll sort of retract, not all the way, and it will hold on to the leg, the IC leg. 
the connection on these isn't usually that bad. You just push that on like that and it, it does hold on relatively tightly. So that's not just gonna fall off on its own. So I'm gonna use two of these clips, one for the pin two on the 555 and another one to connect to a ground point somewhere on the motherboard. We'll have two of these wires that come from China. These are like, we'll call, usually sold as DuPont connectors. And we'll push this one on. So there we go, we have two of those. I found this random resistor, which we need to connect to pin two on the 555. This measures 800 ohms. What I'm just gonna do is take this resistor and actually slide this right into this DuPont connector. And I have a little piece of heat shrink tubing, which I'm gonna slide over the resistor and the DuPont connector. And that leaves the other end of the resistor exposed. And I looked around in my parts bin and I found this momentary switch. And I had used this on some other project that has a little bit of a perf board attached to it, which actually I looked on this pet and that's gonna be perfect. But you could easily just drill a small hole in the side of the pet and install this switch there. It has a little nut you take off and you thread it through. But I'm actually gonna do this in a way that does not result in modifying the pet whatsoever. Already attached to this button were two connectors. I had one that was a pin like this, and the other one was the other gender, the female gender of the DuPonts. If we take this clip here that has the resistor on it, I can take this female end of the DuPont and slide this over the resistor and into the heat shrink tubing. So there we go, the heat shrink is now covering that resistor. And I will use a heat gun to shrink this down and that actually holds these DuPont connectors together on that resistor so that it won't potentially short with something inside the computer. The other end of this momentary push button had the DuPont connector with the little pin on here. And all I have to do is connect that together just like that. So this would be the ground side. The one with the resistor is the one that goes to the triple five timer. And this should do it. If you're uneasy about the DuPont connectors pulling apart and they don't hold very tightly, then what you should do is use again a little bit of heat shrink, slide that over the one DuPont connector and push this in and then move the heat shrink back into the middle and we'll shrink the heat shrink over that as well, which should make that a little bit more resilient of a connection. Okay, time to hook this up. So first off, the red wire is the one that has the resistor on it. And that's the one we're gonna run to pin to on the 555. So we're just gonna go towards the 555 and I'm gonna hold this in a way where I can squeeze it. Of course, make sure you do this when the power is off, right? I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a tug. Yep, that's a solid connection. Now we need to make the ground connection. Now, luckily there are tons of ground points all around the motherboard, but let's find one and just make sure it's ground. So we're gonna take the multimeter, put this on continuity mode. There's a little box right here that is ground. So I'm gonna to touch with a probe to that. And let's just try this random capacitor here. One side, we're getting no continuity. And the other side, we're getting ground. And that should be the same on all of these. That's ground, ground. So on this particular board, all of these bypass caps, or at least these ones I've tested, the ground signal is on the right side. So all we need to do is take the ground clip, squeeze it, and hook it on to one of these capacitors right there. There we go, tug it, it's nice and solid. So I'm just gonna leave this hanging out of the side of the pet and we'll lower the kickstand. Luckily on the pet, there's a big gap between the top and the bottom, so wires can easily just hang out like this without any issue. All right, let's give this a test. We'll turn it on. You hear that chirping, that is the normal startup sound on the pet. Okay, so we'll type a couple characters on here and let's hit the reset button. Success. All right, so it works. And now the question is, what are we gonna do with this button? I could just leave it hanging out of the case like that, but that's not so great, right? Well, what I've noticed is that both of my PET 4016s have this hole already drilled in the case right here. This is over on the left side, sort of near the front of the case. I'm almost positive what this is for is that if you are running one of the original PET motherboards in here, like one from my PET 2001, one of the cassette port connectors is right here on the motherboard. On this motherboard, it has two ports, but they're back there and they both are exposed to the outside world. So you can connect two data sets up. But on that original motherboard, it has it right here because remember the PET had a built-in cassette drive that was discontinued pretty quickly on with the PET. But I think the motherboards had that connector here for longer. So if you wanted to run two data sets, you would need to connect an external one internally to the motherboard. And then you probably ran the cable through this hole so you could close the lid 
and it wasn't closing on the cable. So I think I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that this momentary switch has a little perf board on there, and I'm gonna stick it through the hole and use a little hot glue to just glue it down to the inside of this uh, metal chassis here. This is still accessible even when the lid is down. Okay, up in the office, I have the reset button to connect. The hot glue gun is warming up. I have a really crappy one. It takes a long time to warm up. Just gob this on here quickly and get this stuck on the metal. This is not gonna be a permanent bond. Who knows, in a few months, this might fall off for all I know. But luckily I have heat shrink on everything, so it's there's no danger for this falling off. And there we go, this is how it looks with the switch in there. See, it's just a little momentary switch. It seems to be holding pretty well. When I push it, it doesn't move or anything like that. All right, we'll just do one more check of this cabling, make sure everything is on there firmly. That's on good. This one here, give it a little tug. Yep, that's good. It's, it's on there, pin two. All right, and if I lower down the pet, and just lower this down. Yep, it looks good. You don't even see the little red button sticking out. The button hides really well. It, it's just tucked almost completely underneath this top cover, but I can push it without issue, just with the edge of my finger. All right, the big moment, let's test this. Turn it on. Now, if I type catalog, oh, there's what's on the SD card. And if I hit reset, that, is what I would call a success. Well, that's gonna be it for this video on the pet reset mod. It was a lot easier than I thought it was and I'm glad I was able to do it without making any permanent changes to the pet. Now I do have to give a huge shout out to IZ8WDF who gave me a lot of tips on how to accomplish this mod. So thank you very much. And if you like this video, I really would appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you can still hit that thumbs down button Put your comments and your suggestions down in the comment section below. And of course, if you do use this mod on your pet, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section. Subscribe for more videos. I'll have lots more in the future. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.